My name is Dev, and I've helped thousands of students build AI projects and land their dream internship and job offer. In this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about building AI projects. In the first half of the video, I'll go over why building fewer projects is actually the unfair advantage you need. And in the second half of the video, I'll go over the portfolio pyramid. The bottom half of the pyramid represents one type of project, and the top half of the pyramid represents another kind of project. If you want to build projects and land your dream offer, without spamming leak code, waiting in long lines at career fairs, or awkwardly begging your family for referrals, this is the video for you. The myth we're often taught is just build more projects. That's what everyone on Reddit, YouTube, and Discord say. Volume, volume, volume. More building. But here's the truth. More projects is just more noise and clutter on your resume and portfolio. You aren't getting rejected because you haven't built enough projects. I know you're hardworking and I know you're putting in the effort. The reason you're not getting offers is because your projects just aren't presented in the right way. Too many projects leads to too much noise. When I first started applying, I had four or five projects on my resume. Sounds great, right? Except I got rejected from every single position I applied to. This was over 300 positions in my first application cycle. The problem is that none of those projects were deep. They were all surface level tutorials and recruiters didn't care. It wasn't until I focused on building just two projects, one theoretical and one practical, that I landed offers paying over $200,000 a year. And since then, I've helped thousands of students do the same. The truth is that recruiters don't want a laundry list. They want to see one or two high-impact projects that punch them with depth, creativity, and practical impact. I've seen students with only two standout projects get offers from Meta and Amazon. So so here's the psychological shift. It's not about quantity, it's more about positioning. You almost have to think less like a programmer and more like a marketer. Ask yourself, how can I show depth, originality, and business impact if someone only scrolled on my LinkedIn for 30 seconds? So there are only two kinds of projects you need to build, and they sit on opposite sides of the portfolio pyramid. And these aren't just projects, they're signals, and they work together to paint the full picture that you are a higher worthy AI engineer. Because I know you are, it's just about presenting it in the right way. At the top of the pyramid, we have the theoretical project, re-implementing a research paper from scratch. This signals that you understand the theory, you're not just copying code, and you know how LLMs work. The way to do this is pick a real paper, like attention is all you need, read it, and then rebuild it from scratch. If you're not familiar with attention is all you need, it's a paper from Google in 2017 where they introduced the transformer, the transformer that powers every LLM today. You should also include a write-up for your project where you explain all of your decisions and the different layers of the model. When I first rebuilt a transformer from scratch, it took a while. It took a week or two to finish that project. But that one project taught me more and got me more results than anything else on my resume. And people assume that this is only for people who have a PhD, but when you break it down step by step, it's totally manageable and you can get it done in a week or two. Ultimately, this signals to hiring managers that you're not just importing libraries, you understand how models work at the low level. That's rare, that's valuable, and that's hireable. At the base of the pyramid, we have a more practical or day-to-day -day relevant project. This could be fine-tuning an open source LLM, meaning customizing it on a special use case, or RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Let's go over both. Fine-tuning an open source LLM means we want to create an LLM for a niche use case. This could be education, healthcare, productivity, customer support, whatever you can think of. RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation is when we give an LLM access to some external database which has other knowledge-based documents. 
That way the LLM can answer questions about almost anything and it can look up information in the database to give us a more detailed answer. Ultimately, this signals that you can build real tools that solve business problems. The students in my program have built these two projects and it's what's helping them land their dream offers. Ultimately, this signals to recruiters and hiring managers that you can build end-to-end -end applications, not just a toy demo. It signals that you understand deployment fine-tuning, and inference trade-offs. And it signals that you know what it takes to bring a model into the real world, which is what companies ultimately will pay you for. So here's what to aim for. At the top of the pyramid, we have the more theoretical project. Fewer people even attempt this project, and it will signal a high level of competence. At the base of the pyramid, the more practical projects also have a great return on investment, they're faster to build and quick to iterate on. And of course, after you finish your projects, when you finish the portfolio pyramid, you've got to create a portfolio site with clear formatting that shows the impact of your projects. Include all the metrics that you can think of, model accuracy, training time, any quantifiable business impact. Show it off on LinkedIn and recruiters will love to see this. All right, if you've made it to the end of the video, I have two more resources for you. The first is our accelerator. We've helped thousands of students land their dream internship and job offer, and you can learn more at the link in the description. The second is another YouTube video. If you want to do the first project where you implement a research paper from scratch, it's important that you start with beginner-friendly research papers. This video breaks down some AI papers that are actually not too bad to read, so check it out, and I'll see you in the next one.